Hello everyone. Welcome to the video solution for physics. This is Edexcel IEL Unit 4, uh, June 2018, Part 2. So let's start question number 12. In the early 20th century, experiments were carried out in which uh, high speed alpha particles were directed at thin gold foil. A simplified version of the apparatus used is shown. So this is lead box, alpha particle source, gold foil and the detector. Uh, state to observation and corresponding conclusion made from the alpha particles is scattering experiment. So there are uh, three or four quite evident uh, observation. Number one is uh, uh, most of the alpha particles are passed through a straight. without deviation that means uh, because most of the alpha particles are, are are passed through the gold foil that means most of the space or region of the atom is empty this is the first uh, observation and the very 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 few uh, alpha particles are uh, were, were observed bounced back from the gold foil or you can say that deviated with the uh, greater than 90 degree angle uh, that means there is a small region inside the nucleus at which the mass is concentrated so you can write these two points so most of uh, most alpha particles pass straight through uh, the foil that means uh, the main region or mostly uh, region is empty and very few particles were scattered by small angles that means there is a concentration of charge in the atom this is the another one uh, very few alpha particles were deviated more than 90 degree that means most of the mass is concentrated in a small region of the atom Part B, I calculate the de Broglie wavelength of the alpha particles. Kinetic energy of uh, alpha particles, 5 million electron volt. Mass of alpha particle is this. You need to find de Broglie or de Broglie wavelength. And remember, de Broglie wavelength is uh, lambda because it is the wavelength associated with the moving particle moving particle that means it must contains uh, the motion property that uh, which is called momentum so lambda is equal to h upon m v so if you need to find de Broglie or de Broglie wavelength lambda you need Planck's constant you can find it from your uh, formula sheet but you need mass of the uh, alpha particle which is given here but you don't have velocity of alpha particle but for velocity you were given kinetic energy so you can use uh, kinetic energy to figure out velocity or h divided by mv is momentum and you have a relation between uh, momentum and kinetic energy uh, ek kinetic energy is equal to p square by 2 m this is the relation between momentum and the kinetic energy so from this equation you can figure out momentum once you have momentum you can substitute momentum here to figure out wavelength so for momentum you can rearrange this equation for p so p would be equal to 2 e k m root this is the formula for momentum you have kinetic energy but remember kinetic energy is given in electron volt so this electron volt should be converted into joule so how do you do that you just multiply 5 million uh, that means 5 times 10 to the power 6 this is million or mega into 
1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. If you multiply these terms, then you have energy in joule. So once you have energy in joule, you substitute Ek and the mass of alpha particle so you can figure out momentum P. Once you do that, you have momentum P is equal to 1.03 into 10 to the power minus 19 uh, kg meter second minus 1. This is your momentum. And once you have a momentum, you can figure out lambda. So lambda is equal to Planck's constant divided by 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 Planck's constant divided by momentum that you found here so 1.03 into 10 to the power minus 19 so finally you have answer lambda is equal to 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter this is uh, the wavelength of the particle To justify whether you uh, uh, whether you expect these alpha particles to be substantially diffracted by the gold foil, remember for diffraction, uh, for for substantially diffraction or, or or maximum diffraction, we must have wavelength uh, approximately equal to size of the gap, size of the gap or obstacle whatever you say for uh, maximum diffraction if lambda is equal to the size of the gap then we have a, a diffraction but if you see that uh, the separation of the gold foil is 2.88 10 to the power minus 10 and the wavelength that we found is uh, uh, 6.4 into 10 to the power minus uh, 15 meter so wavelength is uh, quite smaller than the separation of the gold atom so there will be very little diffraction uh, can be expected so you can say that the lambda the wavelength is very very small than uh, 2.8 or separation of the gold atom into 10 to the power minus 10 so there will be very little diffraction not substantially Question number 13, the muon was identified in 1936 from the track of cosmic rays passing through a particle detector. The tracks for the muon were seen to be different from those of electron and the proton. The diagram represents particle track for an electron a muon and a proton passing through a uniform magnetic field. The particle have the same kinetic energy. Particles have, all particles have same kinetic energy. Okay. Explain what can be deduced from the track about the mass and the charge of the muon. Okay, so first of all, this statement, the particles have the same kinetic energy. If you see that same kinetic energy, so kinetic energy depends on two factor, mass and the velocity. So Ek is equal to half mv squared. If kinetic energy for all the particles are same, so but their tracks are different. So you can expect that their velocities or speeds are same here because size of the track or the curvature of the track uh, are different. And uh, if you know an, uh, one more equation which is uh, R is equal to mv by qb. So radius of curvature depends on mass, velocity, amount of charge 
and the magnetic field but for that particular condition all the three particles are moving uniform magnetic field so magnetic field is not changing for the three particles we need to see whether mass velocity and q's are different but they are saying kinetic energies are same curvatures are different that means velocity is same for all the particles that means masses are different so first of all muon has a same curvature as that same means uh, same side of deflection left deflection as that of electron muon is deflecting as uh, uh, the electron is deflect uh, deflecting left side that mean muon has the same nature of charge as that of electron that mean muon has negative charge and the curvature of muon is greater than uh, uh, less than the electron but greater than the proton that mean mass of the muon is greater than electron but less than proton that's how you can uh, predict the mass and the charge of muon The muon has a mass of 106 million electron volt per c square. Calculate the mass of muon in kilogram. A typical question. Generally, they give uh, mass energy in terms of electron volt per c square. They ask to find or convert this uh, into kg. So, how do we do that? Remember, we have a relation, mass energy relation, which is uh, delta E or E is equal to mc square so energy is given which is 106 million electron volt so energy is 106 million or mega 10 to the power 6 this is electron volt so need to convert into joule 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 this is the left side we converted into joule is equal to delta m we need to find or mass m c square and c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole square now you can rearrange this equation for m and then you can figure out mass if you send 3 to the power 8 whole square on the left hand side and you divide all the left hand side with that factor so m would be equal to 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 28 kg the muon was originally called a uh, mu meson when other mesons were discovered it was realized that muon was not the same type of particle as other mesons describe the differences between muon and uh, mesons so remember muon is a fundamental particle it is fundamental uh, while meson is not fundamental particle it is made of quark and anti quark it is meson so made of two 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 quarks quark and anti quark plus anti quark while uh, muon does not made of uh, uh, quarks so, and muon is uh, is fundamental while meson is not fundamental particle muon belongs to lepton family question number 14 The diagram shows an investigation of circular motion. A small movement of a hand causes the rubber band on the end of the string to move in circular path of radius r. The rubber band and the string may be assumed to rotate in the horizontal plane. For a particular experiment, r is 59 cm. Calculate the speed of the rubber band. Mass of m. capital m which is the hang one 
250 gram and mass of the rubber bung which is rotating here 80 gram okay the idea in this experiment or investigation is because the this rubber bung is uh, is revolving in a horizontal circle that means this rubber bung needs a centripetal force acting toward the center and this centripetal force is provided by the weight of the hung mass that means W is equal to capital M G this is the mass this is the weight which is hanging vertically and this weight is providing centripetal force for the bung to rotate in a horizontal circle so you can say that uh, the that uh, weight of hanging weight is equal to centripetal force that means m g is equal to m v square over r and now you can rearrange for uh, a speed v so v would be equal to m g r divided by a small m and then when, and, and, and of course root is there because of the v square so you can substitute all the values so v would be equal to uh, 0 0.25 remember these masses are in gram don't forget to convert into kilogram okay and this is in centimeter so it should be in meter so v is equal to 0 0.25 times g which is 9.81 times uh, uh, radius radius is 59 that means 0 0.59 divided by a small m which is 80 so 0 0.08 uh, 0 or 0 0.08 root once you solve this you have v is equal to 4.3 meter second inverse this is the speed of the rubber bung rotating in a horizontal circle Part B, the speed of the rubber bung is increased. Explain why M now uh, moves to a higher position. As uh, I explained that the centripetal force MV squared provided to the rubber bung moving in a horizontal circle depends on hanging weight Mg. And uh, they are saying that the speed is increased now you so see that for the for this equation V is increasing okay so but if you see the left uh, the right hand side which is capital M and G MG is constant it cannot be changed no matter what do you do so uh, MG is constant that means centripetal force provided to the system is constant centripetal force cannot be changed so centripetal force is uh, mv square over r this is the centripetal force inside this formula v is changing so in order to uh, centripetal force to be a constant so v is increasing that means r has to uh, increase so that the centripetal force it stays same so in order to uh, maintain constant centripetal force as speed is increasing so r has to increase uh, to, to 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 reduce the effect of uh, increase of velocity that means if r is increasing so uh, the the hanging weight should go up or move to the higher position so that the overall centripetal force stays the same In order to calculate the speed of the rubber bung, the time for one rotation must be determined. Suggest, st student A suggests 
the number of rotations in a fixed time should be counted. Student B suggests measuring the time for a fixed number of rotations. Explain which method will produce uh, more accurate results for the time of one rotation. A student A is suggesting the number of rotation in a fixed time in a fixed time and it will give you a problem why because if you if something is uh, is rotating like in a circle so you are standing here okay and you are observing number of rotation let's suppose you are you, you are going to rotate uh, uh, sorry you are going to count number of rotation in in maybe uh, 10 seconds suppose so it is possible that in 10 seconds the number of rotation that you are counting will be ending here maybe or maybe here or maybe here that means you have some fraction of rotation that cannot be counted accurately it is impossible to figure out this fraction of rotations that ends in a fixed time so it will give you less accurate result so it's better to find the uh, number of uh, uh, fixed number of rotation and you calculate the time rather than uh, the uh, rotation in a fixed time because of this fraction it it, it depends uh, where the rotation ends for that fixed timing fifteen the diagram shows a cyclotron A magnetic field of a uniform magnetic flux density B acts vertically upward through the plane of cyclotron. Proton travel along path of increasing radius as their speed increases. A proton of mass M and charge Q is traveling at a non-relative stick speed in the cyclotron. Show that the time T for which proton in is in one of the D's is given by. So T is equal to pi M by BQ. You know that any one of the D when the proton is traveling it is covering half of the circle that means if you see that the velocity of the pro proton in one of the d should be um, s upon t where s is the distance covered or displacement covered so in that case the distance traveled because we are talking about uh, uh, a speed a speed so a speed s is a distance so uh, pi r by t this is of v is equal to uh, pi r by t for the proton in one of the d and you can rearrange uh, this for uh, okay call it equation number one so v is equal to pi r by t and then you know that uh, because uh, the uh, a magnetic field causing the proton to rotate in a circle so magnetic force acting magnetic force BQV this is the magnetic force acting on the proton is equal to the centripetal force so MV square over R and you can cancel one V here and you can uh, uh, substitute V here to figure out value of T so you can do that v is equal to bqr by m and now you have uh, v is equal to bqr by m and v is pi r by t so pi r by t is equal to b q r by m and r r gets cancelled and if you uh, flip this equation so 
t by pi would be equal to m by b q and pi goes over there so t is equal to uh, pi m by b q this is your required equation Part 2, explain why an alternating potential difference uh, of constant frequency is applied to these. So, you know that uh, we have a motion of a proton in these. So, like that. And now we have derived the equation for time taken by a proton in one of the d and with this time is t is equal to pi m upon b q clearly time is constant that means proton has to uh, spend equal interval of time in every uh, rotation but as proton is entering in one of the d it is continuously accelerating that means uh, when proton enters it is slower than when it is about to come so when is uh, the proton is about to come it has some high speed and moving in opposite direction at very that moment we must have alternating potential applied on these d so that as soon as electron reaches to the face of the other d the polarity is switched so that the proton can enter into the next d in a cyclotron high energy protons are directed towards a stationary target uh, in the large hadron collider beam of high energy proton circulating in opposite direction across so that the proton moving in opposite direction collide for the same initial kinetic energy the colliding proton beams allow the creation of particle of greater mass uh, than use of the stationary target explain why using the principle of conservation of momentum in large hadron collider we have two beams of electron moving in a circular path but in opposite direction something like this so these beams of uh, two uh, uh, proton moving in opposite directions are, are are collided in LHC now as the protons are moving in opposite direction so initial momentum is zero that means according to law of conservation of momentum after collision of these two proton beam final momentum should be zero and it is only possible that if uh, 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 the, 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 the kinetic energy if the kinetic energy is very less after the collision or there will be no kinetic energy because if there is a kinetic a huge kinetic energy that means uh, particles has some some velocity and final momentum cannot be zero so in order to conserve conservation of momentum conserve the law of conservation of momentum final momentum must be zero that means there will be a very little or almost no kinetic energy after the collision so what about the energy in the system so all the energy into the system goes to the mass according to e equal to mc square so all the energy in the system goes to the mass and create particles of the greater mass that's why uh, greater masses are created when uh, two opposite moving beams of protons are collided
thank you very much for this video see you in the next one have a nice time